So we're going to start with a kick drum here. And this is an example of a kick drum. Actually, I've already given the front head a lot of a tweak, but we'll, we'll come to the, the tuning of the heads themselves. Um, just a very cheap kick drum. No, no better or worse than any of, the, any of the kick drums that we have in the studios here. In fact, arguably the, uh, the, the, the kick drums that are in the studio are better than this one. Although this one does tend to record quite well. Um, you have feet, okay? And with, with a drum foot, oh, this one's still, this one's got a little back clutch on it. It's exciting. Um, I'll take that off in a bit. You'll see if you wind back, at the moment it's a rubber, rubber <laughs> foot, which will grip certain things. If you've got a carpeted floor, you want to expose the spike. When you pack, if you're packing the drums away, make sure the spike isn't exposed, because it is, well, this one's quite old, so it's about, you know, about as sharp as a plastic knife right now. But uh, it's, it will grip and stop the drum from sliding. Nothing worse than when you're drumming, kick, kick drum, it's further and further away, your hi-hats are sliding away, and you're like, ah, can't play. And three quarters of the way through the perfect tape, you've got to stop, because your drums are taking a walk. Um, different thoughts on this, I mean, I don't know. Myself, I, like to, I actually like to... Uh, decouple my kick drum from the floor where possible, so I will actually tend to su suspend the front of my kick drum in the air. Um, I don't know, I find I just get more power, uh, more power in the sound into the mic that way. Um, if it's resting on the floor, I'm often concerned about things like uh, transmission through mic stands that are on in the studio as well, general vibration through the floor. If I can isolate my kick drum from the floor, I will. And again, I'm just going to make it so that the uh, on top there is somewhere towards the middle. Kick drum pedals. If a kick drum pedal is in a box, it's likely that you have to attach the spring. Some kick drum pedals have springs on two sides, some on one side, you get double kick pedals. For now, this is just a, a fairly simple kick drum pedal, even though it is <coughs> somewhat shiny. It's pimp. It's proper pimp, isn't it? I, I had to go, when I bought the Iron Cobra, I was like, I want a chrome one. <laughs> you know, if I'm going to have an Iron Cobra, I want to fly it. So, um, and that's, that's called an Iron Cobra. You will see these in studios around the world, because they work. And they really do work. Really good, good kick drum pedal. Um, clean, quiet, in the motion of it. But again, you've got to maintain these things. You've got to look after them. And again, there's always something to loosen. Exactly the same with the mic stand. Loosen it off. Place it on. And let's have a listen to our kick drum. Oh, listen to that. I love that. Came with a delay plug in building. The number of people who I have heard recording kick drums where that would be an upgrade is unbelievable. Okay, I've heard so many people recording kick drums that sound somewhat like this one sounds. So let's have a look at what we can do to kind of get it, get it working. I'm going to start off by putting some kind of dampening into the kick drum. So I'll put over here. Okay, this is what like. This is a somewhat over-engineered solution to a very simple problem, you might argue. This is what's called an Evans EQ pad, um, but effectively a pillow. We bought some pillows from Ikea that are in the studios, available for you to use for dampening. And you can find, you can dampen either the batter head or the resonant head. At the moment we don't have a resonant head, but we'll see what the resonant head does in a minute when we get to it. Now, what it's going to do is, effectively on this one, it's going to bounce off and then catch the front head again. You see it's kind of sprung loaded. So the harder we put it on, the harder it's going to bounce back. There comes a point with this one where you'll hear it. You'll actually hear it come back and slap, which isn't so good. Oh, look, more snares. Can't have enough snares. Um, but anyway, let's have, a, let's have a little listen to this. If you, put it, if you find that if you put it on the front head, you tend to get a much tighter kind of knockier sound. If you put it on the back of the, the resonant head, you can really affect the nature of the boom. And you'll get some people who, for example, there's velcro on top of this, so you can actually put one on both. So when you kick the kick drum, it jumps off both and goes back on both. So you can really affect the tone of your kick drum. Um, by moving that around. So let's have another listen to this on this. And now we're going to put this in here and see what it does. A bit kind of Heath Robertson thing. I'm hearing more delay now. <coughs> it's not masked as much, it's more transient. Isn't it? A bit more transient, a bit faster because it's stopping the thing from vibrating anymore. But it's quite subtle. Quite subtle in its, in its, uh, it's all coming out of that top corner with what's going on there. <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to add a resonant head. Now, I find with kick drums, people will tune certain drums to pitches. You'll get people who will tune their toms to the, tune, to the fix, frequency of the song. Um, there's a few different methods of tuning a snare. There's one, I've tried a few, but the one I quite like is where you tune your, your bottom skin to like an A and your top skin to a C. 
for example. Now here's an example of a resonant head, much thinner, kind of flappier than the, the actual uh, other head, but it's got a hole in it. Um, number of uses for that hole. One, great place to put a mic. Two, cats like a port. When you put a port on a speaker, you extend the lowest frequency that it can produce, and this will give you more, well, put more boom in your power, shall we say, by having the hole in there effectively ports it. If you don't put a port in it, it's perfectly feasible to record a drum without that in. Difficult to mic up, difficult to get the mic inside if you want the mic inside, but it will be a more powerful sounding kick drum. Um, it tends to be more resonant, but most people would favour a hole. At the moment, our <laughs> drums don't have holes in the, in the resonant skins, but we are going to, uh, we're going to cut some so you can uh, get on with that. We also need to get some new lugs in the Yamaha kit because some of them are missing. <coughs> One thing to be very careful of with the drum, by the way, this edge here is called the bearing edge, and that's the edge that the skin is connected to. So it's the, it's the point of contact between the skin and the drum. If you don't have a front head on the drum, and this is why I'm very pained to see all our drums without front heads on, if you knock that bearing edge, you're going to get very, very bad vibration running through the head, and the drum is not going to sound hot. So you really need to look after these. You find some people are more fussed about this than others. I am absolutely pedantic about making sure that my logo is where I want it. <laughs> yeah, that looks right. So there we go. And you'll notice with Evans, they've put the hole high. And again, if, if your logo is printed somewhere else, I'd sacrifice the logo for getting the hole up there because it's really hard to get a mic stand in if your hole's at the bottom. There are some kicks where they have a much bigger hole in the middle, as we saw one yesterday with those uh, aquariums, which were like a seven inch hole right in the middle of the drum, which means you can really get in it. I don't know if it's going to do much of a job as a, as a resonant head. So let's attach our, our resonant head here. Again, you've got a thing you do. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. Hoop! You have a hoop. There you are. Um, this one again, this could be used as a front end, it's got a little clip for the, for the kick drum, so I'm going to put that at the bottom. And again, it's really important when you put this on, to give it a little bit of welly around there and make sure that it's well seated, because if you don't seat the head properly on the drum, it's not going to resonate properly. And you might find, to get your dampening in, particularly with a drum like this, you have to take the front head off. Okay, so this head is now roughly attached to this drum kit, but if I hit it, you see it's not resonating. Now with a kick drum, to me you don't tune it to a defined pitch because it's so low, it's quite hard to pick your pitch on it. And there's a few different methods again, and the one I like is the lowest, lowest possible frequency um, for the drum. And I think the way, a good way of doing this, and you'll see loads of videos where people talk about it, is to apply pressure to the middle of the drum. Okay? And you'll see when you apply pressure to the middle of the drum, you get creases all the way around the outer edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten each lug to the point where I see the creases lift. See that? No, I don't think you won't be able to see this, but there's no crease. All of a sudden I've got I've, creases, I've got no crease. I'm going to make the opposite one. Creases, no crease. <coughs> creases, harder to do around the hole. I guess so, obviously it's got tension in it. It's quite hard to see the light in here as well. You get some people who do this by feel. There we go, creases have moved. This is going to be proper rough, this one. Creases have moved. Creases have moved. <coughs> Resonating. Now then, we had the kick drum before. Didn't sound good. Agreed? Yeah. Come on, work for me. Feels like the difficult bit of the magic trick. Power is there, but it still kind of lacks a little something. More dampening is required. Now this particular drum comes with a dampening head. Which I'm going to pop in here. There's two different thicknesses of dampening head on these. You just got to kind of go with the one that sounds best. In my experience, this particular drum relates well to this. I think the front head's a bit tight on there as well. Not a lot of bottom end in that drum at the moment. So we'll tune a little high. Let's just take a little tweak off. There we go. 
again in the studio we do this more accurately. Sounds better than it did before, but this room is really bad, actually, for, for, for communicating bottom end. Yeah, there's a lot of bass loss in there. Absolutely masses of bass loss, while all these traps at the back aren't, aren't helping us, so we're not getting much bottom end off the drum. But again, much more with the resonant head than without. The number of people who are recording these kits without any real thought for tuning. If you were to spend three times that time, you could get this kick drum sounding great. There's no excuse for some of the kicks I've been hearing recorded, but you will not get those drum kits sounding good with the drum heads that are on them currently. So that's my method for tuning a kick drum. Push down on the head till you see the crease go. I've gone too high on this one. Light's not good, you have to get the right light conditions. Just tune it a little bit too high. But you'll see literally, you'll see a crease in the drum kit when you push down in the middle. When you move the lug, sorry, you move, move the tension rod, you'll see the crease move. At the point where it moves, that to me is the lowest point of resonance. And you've got a range between there and a little bit higher where a kick drum will sound good. Anything other than that, and you're not going to have anything like the kind of sound that you would uh, you'd be looking for.